Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Suffolk series, 103 parishes set in some of the most beautiful English countryside, and there's some good ones in this area. Shall we go have a look? Of course. Hello again, West Suffolk folks. The rain has slowed down, which is a good thing. It's not fully stopped, but hopefully in this episode, I'm not gonna get too much wetter than I already am. I am starting to dry out, which is a good thing. Now, if you ever visit this place, you might be tempted to spend the night in this building, you can see right here with the very nice white exterior and the chimney behind it. Well, that's a mill and it's a B&B. &B. You'll find this in the lovely little village of Putnam. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Tuddenham, Tudders Homestead. We go again in West Suffolk and this week in the ever drying conditions, we're in Tuddenham, although I will have to explain straight away exactly which Tuddenham I'm referring to. You see, there are two in Suffolk. One of them is Tuddenham St. Martin, which is near Ipswich. We're not in that one. Instead, we're in Tuddenham St. Mary, much closer to Bury St. Edmunds and Mildenhall. St. Mary is often dropped from the end of the village's name, and although the parish council is termed Tuddenham St. Mary, officially the parish is just simply Tuddenham. Without a doubt, the biggest and most historic landmark here is Tuddenham Mill. Mills have been a thing in this part of Suffolk since at least the time of Doomsday, but the one that stands here today goes back to 1775. It ground flour and still retains its old water wheel. There's no milling today though because its historic shell has been converted into a hotel, which is complemented by 12 acres of water meadow. Tuddenham also has wartime history thanks to a former RAF base, but you wouldn't instantaneously know it was there. In fact, this is one of those villages that has a lot that's hidden in plain sight, including a curious building called a Strake House. Now, what might that have been all about? Come with me and you'll see. We begin our walk at a bridge over a stretch of water. That there is the Tuddenham Mill Stream, which flows north through the village towards the River Lark, which it joins near Barton Mills. It takes its name from the building which stands over it, the enormous Tuddenham Mill. This was a water mill originally, which ground flour. The current structure was designed and built in 1775 by Collins Millwrights of Melton. It has a 53-foot chimney installed to accommodate a steam engine, which drove its three pairs of grindstones. The mill became derelict in 1954, but was rescued in 1972 when it was converted into a restaurant. It's now a hotel, but water continues to play an important part in its charm and daily life. Tuddenham Mill has been reinvigorated for the 21st century without losing any of its historical integrity. If you stay in it, you'll be directly over the road from Tuddenham Nurseries, which occupies the site of the mill's granary. Now a family-run garden centre, this has lots of plants, as you might expect, 
but it also has a cafe, a restaurant and even a function room. After that brilliant start, it would be easy to think that that's all Tuddenham has to offer, but you'd be wrong. Let's have a wander through the village. It's a simple enough settlement consisting of one main road and a side street that runs east towards Cavernham Heath. On the only bend in the main road is the White Hart. This is the village's only pub. Small and flint-faced like many properties in this part of Suffolk, this once had its own brew house attached to the premises. It was owned by Admiral Taverns until the middle of 2010. Tuddenham's High Street is greatly residential. There are no shops here, nor is there a post office. There was a school until recently, but we'll get to that shortly. Many of the buildings, like the pub, are faced with flint, a common building material in Suffolk. I could only imagine how many times the phrase chocolate box would be uttered by the wife along here. Long time viewers know exactly what that means. Despite the lack of businesses, this is a pretty busy road because traffic often uses Tuddenham as a shortcut between the A11 and the A14. Several notable people have lived here over the centuries, including Charles James Blomfield, who was both the Bishop of Chester and Bishop of London in the mid-19th century. Messac Thomas, the inaugural Bishop of Goulburn, and missionary, explorer and naturalist Joseph Thomas Last also lived here once upon a time. Next to pass is Anchor Court. A pub called The Anchor once stood here, but I've no information on its date of construction or closure. No such issues with the house opposite though, this dates back to 1581 according to a plaque on its wall. Now we arrive at the centrepiece of the village, the Green. This is a large triangular piece of land flanked on its longer sides by two arms of a road by the same name. You can catch a bus here. Tuddenham is served by the numbers 357 and 956, the same services that we spoke about at the end of the Herringswell episode. There's a small plaque on the wall which states this is for the users of the bus only, although it also has a parish notice board. Ticket off people, that's three down and exactly 100 to go in West Suffolk. The green has a few landmarks on it. Under the village sign is a time capsule which was buried in 2001. It's due to be opened in 2101. Situated in the middle of the green is a war memorial which is dedicated to all those who served their country as members of RAF Squadron 90. This was more commonly known as XC Squadron and was based for a time at Tuddenham Airfield. More on that later. The memorial and the green in general are the responsibility of the parish council and as such there's no parking allowed upon it. Now let's talk schools. Here's Tuddenham's old free school which was founded by John Cockerton. He left it and the land it stands on in his will to the minister and church wardens for the poor boys and girls of the village. The village no longer has a school but it used to until very recently. If you head along the high street a bit further you'll see School Close. It was built in 2021 on the site of a much more modern school than the one on the green. It was very small, but despite that, there was a parking space at the front for a school bus. Now we come to the church dedicated to St Mary as the village's name suggests. A simple church, it comprises a chancel, nave, south aisle and tower and dates mainly from the 14th century. It's built of stone, flint and rubble and it underwent a thorough renovation in 1876 when the roof was repaired. New pews and a new organ were installed at the same time. It's a grade one listed building. It wasn't open, but according to the Suffolk Church's website, a lot of its historical fabric and forgotten treasures have been lost to modern development. After a walk through the modest churchyard, which still has lots of space for future burials by the way, we can pick up a footpath that runs to the playing field. It skirts the back edge of the bowling green, seen here through these trees, before emerging onto the cricket square. Tuddenham has facilities for football as well, which is played here most weekends by Tuddenham Rovers, members of the Cambridgeshire County League. On the wire fencing around the bowling green, I located a banner with their Barcelona-esque type logo. 
After making our way around the bowling green, we find ourselves at the pavilion for Tuddenham St Mary Cricket Club. You can walk through behind this into School Close. That's where you'll come across the brand new Village Hall. The decision to build this on the old school site was made in 2015. The playing field also features this rather large adventure playground. Whilst taking nothing away from the stunning village green, I reckon this area is now the main focal point of the entire village. Just beware of those low-flying cricket balls though, won't you? Our last section sees us encounter the village pond. Now there's not a lot to say about this or the houses that surround it really, so instead enjoy these images of it while I tell you about something else. Pictured is the Strake House. It's on the road to Higham and it's one of those you had to know it was their landmarks. And I didn't. It's the remains of a 19th century forge that used to heat short strips of iron called strakes. These were then put onto wooden cartwheels and acted like a tyre wood on a modern car. The Strake House was restored by the council in 2011. And with that folks, we're back to the green. Now I saw this house earlier while I was stood on the green, but I thought I'll save that one last because it literally right is on the finishing point. Isn't that impressive? Lovely little building that. Little, little, did I say little? I meant big, massive building. Fabulous, isn't it? Wonder what century that dates from originally. Who knows, who knows? Anyway, that is Tuttenham St. Mary, Tuttenham Village main walk being complete. However, we're not quite done with this episode just yet. There are two more things that I want to talk about. First of all, there's a nature reserve to the north of the village, and that is gonna be spoken about in today's special section. Straddling the border between Tuddenham and Cavanham is the massive Cavanham Heath Nature Reserve. It can be accessed via the road that runs northeast away from the village green. Cavanham Heath is both a regionally important geological and geomorphological site and a site of special scientific interest. It has a vast swathe of stunning heathland and woodland landscapes, which are particularly superb in late summer when the land turns a beautiful shade of purple as heather starts to bloom. The heath offers three trails, a woodland trail, which is a very peaceful and easy access route, a heathland trail which is much more adventurous but offers wonderful views across the Lark Valley, and a wetland trail, a more demanding route alongside the River Lark. Other than a car park, there are no facilities at Cavanham Heath. This is really the middle of nowhere. No wonder then that Cavanham Heath is often referred to as Suffolk's Wild West, although take it from me, there won't be any cowboys and Indians out here, just lots of beautiful Suffolk countryside. And one more thing of note that you'll find in the village is the Purple Pantry, a farm shop and cafe. If you go alongside the green, that away, it's up there. I think it's just a, a few paces away from where the playing field is actually, but of course we came this way back to the green to head back this way. Now the last thing I want to do here in Tuddenham is talk a bit about its former RAF base. It's right on the boundary between Tuddenham and the next parish over to the east. It's not the easiest of RAF bases to actually go and fill because there's not much left of it. Let's see if we can find some bits, shall we? RAF Tuddenham was a Royal Air Force station located to the immediate east of the village. Today the site has been returned to agricultural use and little remains of the airfield facilities. Part of it is now used by Gunman Airsoft. Tuddenham was a Class A airfield used originally for Stirling bombers before housing Lancasters between 1944 and 1946. 17 Stirlings and 36 Lancasters were lost from Tuddenham during operations abroad. The airfield was then used by the Americans from 1955 to 1959 as a munitions and refurbishment site. It was later used as a Thor medium missile site until 1963, and after the removal of the Thor missiles it closed a year later. Topography wise it was a standard A shape, with three runways, but they're almost impossible to locate accurately now, even on aerial images. This track we're on here was one of the surrounding perimeter roads. There are several accommodation buildings still standing in various states of decay. They were probably used by the WAF and they were cold and cramped and quite unpopular apparently. Time to move on. That's been Tuddenham and I'll see you in the next one here in West Suffolk.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.